I V M. You have tuned into the Eighty Kerry Talent Tent podcast with me, P Man, and me, Krupa, the Queen of Fact. and we are here putting the spotlight on fresh and the most amazing talent we've seen at our ADKD talent tents which happened all over the country five to six cities actually where all group are so we have one in mumbai pune um chandigarh now delhi uh, bangalore um shillong shillong, shillong, shillong of course shillong. we can't and wait to get some students from shillong on this podcast inshallah it'll happen soon very soon <laughs> Today we have Naila or Nailu Saldan. Her <laughs> she is a student from Saint Xavier's, and we former student. former. I mean, five days yeah. ke graduate. Okay, I mean. So um, Naila is. So we first met Naila at um, our talent tent in Kaleidoscope, which is the 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 annual festival of Sophia College. This was in two thousand sixteen. Yeah. and uh, ever since like we've seen Naila perform at like countless talent tents and we yeah it's just been so awesome being friends with you Naila <laughs> Wait, so, so she's from Bangalore and also she's from Xavier's interesting I'm not because not from Bangalore मतलब you did something in Bangalore yeah. you did College. so you spent time in Bangalore yeah. so that makes you a little bit from Bangalore no so i'm from kolar gold fields which is short which is long for kgf which is a small town that's 100 kilometers away from bangalore which is where i was born and raised all right she's from karnataka <laughs> i'm from and kgf and you're from xaviers yes that ties in brilliantly well because we are talking about dress codes in colleges and who better to ask than somebody from xaviers <laughs> <laughs> also um which college again did you go to in bangalore in bangalore i went to christ perfect Perfect. I think I think I'm that's just perfect. I'm going to get that. I'm going to give me my degree after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh inshallah boys will play well. Naila please. We are going to take a break but we can come back from that break and you're going to do a song for us. All right. Because that's what you're here for. for. Yes. Cuz to sing for us. Yes. To All right. Serenade us while we talk. Don't go anywhere friends. We're going to be right back with Nailu doing song. Bye bye. <laughs> Advertising is dead. Yep, you heard me right. Advertising is dead. We're all in the content business now. Let's not call it news, TV, radio, etc., etc. It's all content, and we're in the middle of this weirdly exciting phase where all the borders and lines that have been drawn over decades has been swept away by this lovely thing called the internet. We're a show where we don't dwell on just the stuff that is now, but rather the wider stuff about advertising, media, content, and the whole goddamn circus surrounding it. Tune in every Tuesday for our weekly unboxing of the mystery box we used to call advertising. I'm Varun Dugirala, co-founder and content chief at The Glitch, and this is my new podcast, Advertising is Dead. Welcome back to the ATK Talent and Podcast. Here is Naila doing snooze. Think so I say hitting snow 
Snooze. Okay, so um, Snooze is a song that I wrote when I was here in Bombay, and um, it was basically about. So I don't write new songs or make music as often as I'd like to, and a lot of that is because I tend to go into like these very deep <laughs> um, wells of unproductivity, and I tend to procrastinate a lot. So I don't end up doing this as often as I'd like to, which I plan to work on over the summer. But yeah, snooze is basically all my life. I've thought that I've had like these really big plans for the future, but I realized at one point that I've just been putting them off, and that I keep saying that this will happen at some point, and I'll do this at some point. So I mean, I made a metaphor out of it, and it's basically like you're just hitting snooze on your plans. Every day and just pushing them off for later. So that's how the song came to be. That's wow. so meta, though. I know. May- maybe yeah. she felt this way when she was in Kolar Gold Fields, yes. but then mm. she hit snooze till she reached Bombay and she said, "Let's write." Yeah, Gana. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. P man, I don't know why you said that. <laughs> no, uh, because uh, we are we are trying to talk about dress codes in colleges. Yes, first off, that's why. Um, Naila, you were in Christ College, mm. Bangalore. Mm. That's uh, yeah, yeah. They are pretty so, epic, huh? With yeah. So I mean, Christ was honestly they were two really great years as a whole in Bangalore. But uh, since we're talking about dress codes, I think Christ is known mainly. I think when you think of Christ, you think of how strict it is as an institution and the dress code. Personally, me coming from a small town, moving to a big city, being in a like um an urban educational institution, I didn't think that Christ was that strict. But I can see how like a lot of city dwellers would find that going from like a like say a, like a lot of my friends were from Catholic schools, going from there. to another catholic institution that's much much stricter with their dress codes because yeah christ um so the christ dress code was basically this was for junior college which is called puc the christ dress code for girls was you had to wear patialas and we had to wear kurtas that were knee length they had to be knee length and uh, the dupatta was compulsory it didn't matter how you wore it um but you had to have a dupatta on your body that was the phrase that they'd use Um when you go into Christ University it becomes a little more um relaxed because you're allowed to wear leggings oh, and um, how liberal and then yeah I mean that's a thing leggings were banned in colleges in Kerala if I'm not mistaken mm. sometime last year In fact someone told me that if you wear leggings to this certain college uh, you can be marked absent Which certain college is this I have no idea but they were just this is just a conversation Yeah oh, right. Yeah, yeah Christ actually had a lot of interesting dress code rules. So they had this for the girls in JC, and um, you weren't allowed to color your hair. Uh, hmm. That was another thing in university. In no, junior college, right, yeah, you weren't right. allowed to have colored hair, and um, I think the boys weren't allowed to have long hair. So you had to get a haircut, and if you came to class and you were not, you had to be clean shaven also. So if you came to class and you weren't clean shaven and if you didn't have a haircut, the college would give you money and they'd say like go to the barber and come back. Wow. Why? What's the deal with like hair? I don't know. I mean, the so, Christ dress code is one that is very difficult to question. I mean, it's very easy to question, but they'll give you like a very twisted argument. I remember when I was in college in St Andrews in Mumbai, yeah, the thing was uh, for boys Maybe girls no. Mostly boys. We couldn't have facial piercings. Hmm. I had a eyebrow ring. Hmm. My other friend had. Well, most of us had eyebrow hmm. rings at that hmm. time. And When was this again? This is long back. Yeah, I'm talking about two thousand four. Long back. So yeah, we couldn't hmm. have uh, facial piercings. Was a thing for the 
guys and yeah and we couldn't have sagging pants yeah. you know we still had a pants sag yeah in christ i mean the boys aren't allowed us are not allowed to wear jeans so <laughs> what? for the boys in university yeah in university and in um, junior college so you have to wear the boys dress code is you have to wear a shirt it has to be like it doesn't have to be tucked in but it needs to be a shirt with a collar it could be full sleeved or half sleeved and you need to be wearing like khakis or formal pants you can't wear like denims basically i think even chappals are not allowed why are toes provocative <laughs> so that's the thing right so we were talking about this earlier i so there is the whole i feel like the whole provocative argument is used only for girls hmm. and when it comes to boys what they tell you is you know we want to maintain the like the ambience of an educational institution and and an academic vibe which is fine which i understand to some extent but with girls very often that argument is not used and they use the whole you know it's provocative hmm. you and i mean at in some colleges they've said like you know you don't want to get the wrong kind of attention from the boys and stuff like that and honestly but actually i've actually seen this argument being used on a boy because um but this wasn't a dress code thing this was just a boy at Xavier's um lying down in the quad where you're not allowed to lie down anymore and they were like you're attack- uh, attracting unwanted female attention um But yeah the thing is the provocative argument is used only with girls because I don't think men have ever been under that provocative gaze in the mm-hmm. first place. But you've got plenty of other arguments there is an argument for everyone. Yeah you know that's funny because I went to a girls college and um, we weren't allowed to wear anything that was above our knees. So whenever you know we wear like we wore shorts or if there was also a hostel there yeah. so if they wore like boxers or anything you know. Mm. it was just like it was looked down upon they would like slut shame you and they would give you this really ugly like denim skirt looked upon down upon by the staff like by the, by the staff, wardens yeah, yeah. and all of that yeah. yeah so um the sister would give you a really really ugly like <laughs> awful looking like denim sh- uh, skirt and you were supposed to wear it and it was basically like a like a scarlet letter yeah it was just like it was Like you would like not wear shorts because you don't want to wear that skirt. You didn't want to, yeah. That's crazy because I thought if you were an all girls, did you have girls, to wear it and like give it back? Was yeah, it like we a would, yeah. sisterhood of the traveling skirt? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought if you were an all girls college or all girls, you know, university thing, dress codes would be a little relaxed because hey, you're not tempting anyone there. Um, I mean, unless unless. <laughs> Okay. You know, you don't want to go there, yeah. but yeah. you know, if you just happen to like go out of the college and you know attract like male attention, that's not like what the that's sisters want. Condition. It's just so sad. So, but yeah, yeah. How was the dress codes in Xavier's, or how is the dress codes in Xavier's? Um, so the current dress code in Xavier's uh, is for girls. It is no sleeveless, and uh, you're not allowed to wear anything <coughs> below the knee. Uh, ripped jeans are banned. Anything which, above the knee or below the knee? Not allowed to wear anything uh, above the knee. Did I say below? Sorry. <laughs> so what? You yeah. wear socks till here and then leave all. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not allowed to do that. But the thing is, sometimes even if you wear like a skirt that's like calf length, they'll still have like an issue with it sometimes. So it's a, it's a very grey area. Basically, they just don't unless it's a full length skirt. They're a little iffy about it. I understand the dress code at Xavier's to some extent. It's not, res- I haven't felt like restricted by it in any way. I haven't felt like it's been like you know oppressing me or curtailing my freedom in any way. But like I was saying earlier, um, I feel like your inst the the dress code of your institution or whatever you're studying, whatever you're working, kind of ends up shaping your wardrobe in general. Mm. So like like I said earlier, I wouldn't be wearing this. Um, I haven't worn this. I've had this for the last three years, but I've never worn it even once, because it's just not my everyday vibe. And when I'm going out, you just ultimately end up dressing like what you like you do on a regular basis. So, but an interesting fact about Xavier's is um, they have a problem with sleeveless, but they don't have a problem with sleeveless kurtas. Hi. Which, sleeveless for guys as well or just n- women? No, sleeveless for everyone is not allowed. But no, I mean that I, I don't think I've ever seen a guy in a sleeveless kurta at Xavier's. But yeah, like I've seen girls with sleeveless kurtas that have been allowed to walk in. So that was kind of strange. They're compensating so with confused. sleeves for. Uh, yeah. 
So uh, yeah. on our ADKD Instagram page, uh, we do some fun stuff and fun trivia. And uh, last time, uh, Krupa Madam, you did something. Tell me. So I asked, um, I asked our followers how, like, if there are any like ridiculous uh, dress codes that have been implemented on the students. And I had some really like fun um, answers, responses. Uh, some of them were. No colored hair, like Nyla said before. No round neck T-shirts, cause collarbones. No know. round neck T-shirts because collarbones. I don't know. I mean, I'm just like trying to reason with them. Formal shoes only. I think we've all, we've discussed this earlier, yeah. but it's I don't like I don't understand the logic behind like all these. It just doesn't make sense. No facial piercings, like uh, P man said earlier. And uh, most recently, I think um, at a holy event at um, JJ Hospital's Grant Medical College in Baikala. No, holy or holy? Uh, like holy, the festival. Holy, huh? like the festival. Twenty first March, wala holy. So they had some people creating ruckus, according to a news article, yeah. and uh, that led to the college banning short skirts hmm. and um, asking slash. Uh, you know, telling the students like the genders to sit separately. Mm. You know, you can't. You can't yeah. like. Hello. That means even the boys were wearing skirts. I want to think that was the case, but we don't. No, live but in you know Utopia. what? On that note of like um, boys and girls being made to sit separately in colleges, I feel like most of the students we or most of the students that I know, like after school, have gone into like the arts background and all from like. More dominantly arts colleges, but I've seen some of my friends that have gone into like engineering and medicine, and they've gone to such ridiculously strict colleges where you're not allowed to talk to the boys. What what, what college is this? Tell I don't more. know the names of the college, mm. but I I know of Sate College in Mumbai that has separate staircases for boys and girls. Yeah, even um yeah, there's a college in KGF also that that has that. That had that. I don't know if they still have Separate it. Separate staircase for boys and girls. Yeah. So yeah, like some of these engineering colleges and medical colleges are really strict, and even for junior college, actually, um, I went to Bangalore for junior colleges, but uh, some of my friends went to study science at uh, these junior colleges that were like on the outskirts of Bangalore, and these places were ridiculously strict. So for junior college, they had uniforms, which is fine, but uh, they had a bunch of really weird rules, like you weren't allowed to study or read anything that was not your textbook. So if they caught you with like a novel, you were so literally. You know how in movies there are people like hiding novels inside. They 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 oh, actually do that. That that was the case in school. You know, we yeah. like whenever we were sent for assembly, they'd have surprise yeah. checks and like, you know, yeah. confiscate of your, bag. of your bags. So they'd set uh, they'd send monitors and prefects yeah. to like check everyone's yeah. bags. Like there's no personal space. Yeah. Nothing of that sort. Dude, that like, much power shouldn't be given to a kid, man. To like check, it's, <laughs> it's it's a very mean thing to do. Cause there'd always be that one person at the assembly that would be checking everyone's belt and shoes. Yeah. And like, if you were lucky, you were friends with that person, and you hmm. could let it slide. Otherwise, you were. <laughs> it wasn't a good scene. What What's the other colleges like in uh, Bangalore? Do they um, have such strict uh, dress codes as well? No, I'd say in Bangalore, if you say college strict dress code, you'll think you'd think of Christ ideally. Mm. But yeah, so that's the thing with the Christ dress code. A lot of people have a problem with it because uh, me personally, I was very comfortable in Indian clothing. The dupatta I felt was very unnecessary, and the whole reason for the dupatta, I was told by a former teacher from Christ, was that girls were wearing like kurtas with really low necklines. Which is why they brought the dupatta into place. But then again, they had the whole you can wear the dupatta anywhere on your body, like tie it around your wrist for all we care. But the dupatta has to be there. So then that was slightly ridiculous. I was like, but why? Did you any time uh, your parents tell you like, are they comfortable with these uh, dress codes happening in colleges, or were they like, ha, huh, okay, they are protecting our daughters anyways? They've not really had much of an opinion. They, my parents are quite chill, so they've just been like, yeah, whatever. What about you, Krupa? Your folks, dress codes and everything. My parents were actually on board with it, you know, because if you're sending your daughter to a college, and you know, why would you want her to do anything but study, or like do extracurriculars that don't involve scandalous things? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the whole college jari ho ya fashion show. 
phrase that's mm, used yeah 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 damn yeah you've never heard that no no i think again in our um, educational system the way it works is being a male lets you get away with a lot of rubbish and kind of ins- insulates you to the rubbish that happens as well so i think i was a little bit privileged mm. in that way that mm. i didn't have to other than uh, no sagging pants but that's all right i didn't care about sagging pants but no facial piercings that was a little harsh yeah <laughs> how do we express ourselves <laughs> <laughs> I don't know graphic t-shirts I guess. That also graphic t-shirts with messages oh, on yeah. them. Oh yeah, so this what? um sorry this uh, same college that I told you about in KGF that had separate staircases for boys and girls at one point they banned um graphic t-shirts. For what joy? Because they didn't want to risk you having something explicit on your t-shirt. So they were like like nothing is allowed. In Kolar Green Gold Fields gold, who gold. is buying graphic t-shirts tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get over there Max? No, but I remember like, there you know, was this Sorry Shakti one. There was <laughs> this <field>. whole um <laughs> phase where graphic t-shirts were really the hype when like Sanya Mirza was like the coolest thing and graphic t-shirts were like <coughs> all the rage this is when Sanya was, Mirza t-shirts no not Sanya Mirza t-shirts but Sanya Mirza herself used to wear like a lot of graphic t-shirts and so those became the hype this is when i was like 8 years old and i only know this because my older sister was a part of this graphic t-shirt generation you all had a lot of time in KGF yeah <laughs> there's not there's literally nothing to do i mean if you're like picking up stuff that i'm i'm also hyderabad is not that far away so i guess the, that came in fast than came to bombay what news about sanya mirza's t-shirts no this was like in 2008 2007 or something okay took that long when did this start <laughs> I, i don't know you said when you were 8 years old yeah so which was in like 2007 ha huh, so Shoot, you were born in the in 99 in, oh It's all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It all adds up now. Hmm. You know about anything in uh, Delhi uh, from the colleges and the universities over there for dress codes? Krupa, no. <laughs> so then we will edit that bit out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. That. But um, I know a lot of ex Xavierites, and a lot of them have told me how. like the Xavier's dress code in itself has changed over the years because i told you what it is currently but apparently there was this one principal i think in the 80s i don't know the exact timeline of it but he didn't like red so you were not allowed to wear red in Xavier's the color was banned for a i think period. that's uh rubbish le rumeur no no that's that's true i know like a student that was a part of this generation that was not allowed to wear red it's we we'll have to um, do some research <laughs> our queen of facts w- will find us out i want to know more that's all i know that red was banned and i at there was a time where the dress code at zavier's was very relaxed you could wear a skirt of whatever length you chose and you sleeveless was allowed yeah that's really weird actually because i feel like we're slowly moving backwards and yeah. getting more conservative about certain things but that's also because i feel like when you're given a certain freedom the there are laws and there are rules that come to curtail that freedom only when that freedom is abused that's not always the situation but like i said with zaviers and the rip jeans ban when i first came to zaviers everyone was wearing rip jeans mm-hmm. and uh, luckily then i didn't own rip jeans and so i just wear like my normal jeans and my normal pants to college so the ban didn't affect me at all but when they put the ban in place they said they gave us a very silly reason they said uh, rip jeans are a mockery of the poor which is quite ridiculous because then i could pinpoint like a hundred things that that are happening at zaviers that are a mockery of the poor so and then later on a teacher told us you know that this was actually put in place because someone was wearing rip jeans that were almost ripped near the crotch so i mean that to some level i agree is inappropriate and should not be done in an academic institution because you still want to maintain that academic vibe i get that although i agree that it's possible to be productive in like in sweatpants and a t-shirt i still think there needs to be like a certain level of like that academic vibe that is maintained so yeah i think dress codes come into place when you kind of abuse the freedom that's given to you i remember speaking with students from flame university in hmm. pune and they were telling me how they have absolutely zero dress codes most oh, yeah, of them stay the, on campus yeah but i've heard flame is wild <laughs> in oh. i mean 
Jai Hind also has like a no dress code policy, yeah. I think, and uh, they work fine, I think. So, I mean, they're they're okay. I mean, no one's. Yeah, but then again, like, yeah. So there's no there's no way to measure this, right? Like, yeah. how is the dress code affecting like the quality of your students? There's no way to actually measure this. So, if we have to conclude this mm. and put down, what would you say? Dress codes, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, I can't give you like a solid yes or a no. That's the problem. Thumbs sideways. Yeah. Krupa, you thumbs up, thumbs down, dress codes. Honestly, honestly, I mean, I might regret saying this, but sometimes there are days where I've had to go to college where I've just wished I had a uniform, because then you it just saves you that trouble of wondering what to wear in the morning. That's such a yeah. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, genuinely. Krupa, thumbs up, thumbs down, dress codes. Oh, uh, down, man. I think I would have. been okay without having to worry about the length of my shorts i know and i remember um speaking about this with someone i don't remember whom but i think it's high time in our country we need to start doing this whole desensitizing women's body parts to people like you know if you see someone with shorts you are seeing someone with shorts not like oh you're seeing her legs you're seeing her thighs what the, what the hell man you should i don't think that should be a thing yeah you're just seeing yeah. someone you're just seeing someone wearing whatever they wear yeah i mean so maybe if we start this start this from colleges yeah and we you know you're not shamed yeah. for for example i have uh, sorry um i have friends in bangalore that didn't have a dress code in school as well and i mean they turned out fine <laughs> so you didn't have they didn't have uniforms in no they no didn't have this one school in bangalore it's called uh, prakriya green hmm. and they didn't have um uniforms they were a really chill school actually they went on like nature walks and stuff every day yeah it's green <laughs> yahan pe kaun sa nature walk matlab bombay mein kahan pe sgn sgn the, the most to hmm. borivali uh, gandhi the borivali national park over there Yeah, so I I think uh, dress codes are rubbish, and they should uh, off with them, and let anyone wear whatever they want. And let anyone have facial piercings. And, and let anyone have facial piercings and pink hair, hair and pink hair and whatever. Yeah. So thumbs down for dress codes. Thumbs man? down for dress codes for mm. me too. Especially if you're in an all girls college, I don't think. मतलब कोई भी मतलब like yeah. I don't think it's necessary. You need to put blinders why? for the boys. Let's do it that way. So they like you know the blinders, the horses way. So they're just but, looking in front. Put but that life them. is just easier when you ask boys to not to like behave themselves. You know. I guess. Yeah. Also, we learned today that uh, Nyla does a brilliant chipmunk voice. So what I want you to tell first, Nyla, in your chipmunk voice, unfiltered, no processing, no filters, no VST plugins, anything on no this. No Snapchat. No Snapchat filters, Nyla. You're going to tell us. No, you're going to tell the people that this is the ATK Talent Ed podcast, and you're going to be right back with a special performance by Nailu Saldu. तो दर सजनो ये है ATK Talent Ed का podcast और हम अब ये छोटा सा break लेंगे और बाद में आएंगे एक लजीज गाना के साथ. लजीज नमकीन and लजीज. B R B fam. <laughs> Hi everybody! Welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you are not following us on social media, please make sure you do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd like to thank our sponsors this month: Savari Storytel and Paytm Money. Also, guys, I just want to remind you that we do these audiograms on our social media. Audiograms are short snippets from episodes which are interesting to listen to. Check them out; I think you'll enjoy them. Also, guys, we are doing a podcast with Ronnie Skruwala called the Ronnie Skruwala Podcast, and on that podcast, on the last episode, we're going to have Ronnie answer a bunch of listener questions. If you'd like to send us a question, please send it to us at dreaming at ivmpodcast dot com. Also, do check out our YouTube page where we have Ronnie talking to Cyrus on Cyrus Says. We have a bunch of short clips there which I think you'll enjoy. This week on Shunya One, Sheila Ditya and I are joined by Hitesh Malhotra, the Chief Marketing Officer of Nike, to talk about various aspects of marketing. On Equity Sahi Hai, brought to you by Motilal Oswal Asset Management, Shreya Lunker talks to Anupam about life insurance and what the product is all about. On the Habit Coach podcast, Ashton tells you different ways to manage and control stress and how it will impact your life in a positive way. On Know Your Kanun, Amber talks about the structure, power, and characteristics of the recently passed Lokpal Bill. 
on the Prakriti Podcast, Anand Arni, ex-member of RAW and Pranay Kotastane, head of the geostrategy program at Takshashila, discussed the upcoming election in Afghanistan. On Advertising is Dead, Varun is joined by Harshad Chavan, managing director of Toast Events, to talk about the growth of digital media, influencer marketing and the famous Gap Dabbawala campaign. On the ATKT Talent Tent, hosts P-Man and Krupa are joined by singer-songwriter Naila Sultana. They discuss the strict dress codes followed by colleges in India. On Positively Unlimited, Chetna talks about different aspects of relationship, unrequited love, heartbreaks, closures, and how to find your soulmates. And with that, let's get you on with your show. Welcome back. This is the ATKT Talent Tent Podcast and this is Naila with Unfazed. I wish that I could fly away I'm sat here smoking with my lungs ablaze I'm sat here crying through the long and quiet nights I'm sat here praying for my soul to melt its ice I see green and yellow I see blue I see myself in the mirror but I cannot see you See the blacks and whites fading into grays I see myself in the mirror completely unfazed By all the pain, by all the pain, by all the pain It's such a shame that by all the pain By all the pain, by all the pain, by all the pain, all the pain I'm so unfazed to the ATKD Talent 10 podcast and what we do is feature and talk with some amazing brilliant and talented students from the college and universities in our country and why in our country also abroad so wherever you are if you are a college student you've got talent we've got podcast hit us up man hit us up at atkt.in on uh, facebook um, atkt.in on instagram and you can follow us on our website it's just we just really like talking to people and yeah if you got something to say just like yeah, email us or something real nice people yeah yeah naila yeah. where can the people uh, spot and listen to more of your songs please give us social medias um yeah so on instagram you can find my music at, at @billy saldana i very slyly released um something recently on like apple music and spotify and all of that it's a song that i wrote in 2016 it's called this war so you can find it there the acoustic version that i just recorded in my bedroom which is up on all major streaming platforms and on Sorry. facebook it's naila saldana bye bye <laughs> we'll be back soon next week with a new student new talent new topics tough so. tough bye mama Hi, I'm 
I'm Ronnie Scruella, first generation entrepreneur and co-founder at Upgrad. My podcast, Dreaming With Your Eyes Open, is a companion podcast to my best-selling book, Dream With Your Eyes Open. On this podcast, I talk to Amit Doshi, founder of IVM Podcast, about my entrepreneurial journey. I walk you through my successes and failures, mostly my failures, and the lessons that I learned from my experiences, family, and colleagues. What was my first entrepreneurial venture? Why I chose Japanese cartoons over animation cartoons on Hangama? Why did I sell my stake at UTV to Disney? Find out all this and more on the Ronnie Scruella podcast, Dreaming With Your Eyes Open. New episodes out every Tuesday on the IBM Podcasts app, website, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Think fast. If I tell you I'm Parsi, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Dhan Sak, I don't blame you. My name is Parzan Patel. You may know me as the Bavi Bride. Though I run a popular Parsi food blog, the truth is I didn't know anything about Parsi food until I got married. It was just my luck. He turned out to be your typical sadra lega wearing, kawap khari eating Parsi boy. And the only thing I knew was dhansak, or rather how to eat it. But there's more to Parsi food than dhansak. And there is more to us than our obsession with eggs and our legendary Rani cafes. Welcome to Not Just Dhansak, a fresh new show where I talk to friends, fellow bhavas and Parsi entrepreneurs about all things Bhonu. A little bit of history, a dash of bhava madness and a lot of food talk. There's more to Parsis than meets the eye and there's certainly more to us than Dhansak. Join me every Tuesday as I talk to some of my favorite Parsis in the food space in India and beyond. I am the Bhavi Bride and this is Not Just Dhansak.